Hi, I'm George and welcome back. This week we're following on from previous experiments we've done looking at how gravity affects things on board the rocket. Uh, this week we're going to be having a look at uh, how liquids behave. Now the reason you might want to know how a particular liquid behaves in flight is you might be building multi-stage water rockets, perhaps even a hybrid rocket with liquid nitrous oxide. Uh, sometimes you can use water as ballast in your nose cone or perhaps you're using something as simple as a baking soda and vinegar for a deployment mechanism. So let's have a look how this experiment set up and then we'll finally also have a look at uh, what the results are and what we can learn from that. So let's get started. We'll be looking at two liquids. We've got water and air in this tube and then we've got water and oil in this one. We added a little bit of food colouring just to make it easier to see. We then 3D printed a couple of mounting brackets. They're designed to securely hold the tubes during flight and landing. Using three wooden dowels as spacers, the whole thing is held together with screws. And then we put a nose cone fairing over the top of that. Next, we printed a camera bracket that holds the camera so we can get a good view of the tubes in flight. And the camera is screwed down to hold it securely. The experiment is then attached to the top of the deployment mechanism and the whole thing is then fitted on top of the Axion G6 rocket. For this flight we pressurised the rocket to 205 psi. So let's have a look at the onboard video first in real time. Here on the left we've got the altitude plot in relation to the video. Now let's look at the right tube in slow motion. At launch and during acceleration the water is held at the bottom but as soon as the rocket stops producing thrust at burnout the rocket is effectively in zero g except for the air drag on the rocket which creates a negative acceleration and the water starts to move up. At this point the rocket is still heading upwards as you can see by the horizon. The water remains at the top all the way through apogee and back down again until the parachute opens. Now let's have a look at the tube on the left. Again during acceleration the denser water is on the bottom and the oil is on top. At burnout the water starts to move up and the oil down but near apogee the rocket is very close to zero g there is no incentive for the oil to continue floating down or up and we end up with this strange layering where we have oil, water, oil, water and oil layers. If you look closely you can see the water bubbles floating in the oil in zero g, neither moving up or down. Four, Just to confirm the observations three, we flew two, the rocket again. One, and here is the video from the second flight. Again you can see the same behaviour in both liquids with the oil and water separating into multiple layers. Okay, so what can we learn from that? If you consider a two-stage water rocket, on launch the water in the sustainer is held down. When the first stage reaches burnout you immediately stage the rocket and the sustainer continues to accelerate without problems. However, if you consider the same scenario again, 
The water stays at the bottom of the sustain enduring boost, but this time at burnout we don't stage the rocket and let it coast upwards for a while. The water then begins to move up in the sustainer exchanging places with the high pressure air. If you then stage the rocket, the high pressure air is going to start escaping first and the water starts moving back down under the acceleration. By the time the water reaches the nozzle again, you have less pressure in the rocket and you only get lower thrust and a much less efficient system. So that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed that. Next week we're going to try and bring you some flights from our Malayli high power launch site of the Light Shadow rocket and also the Polaron G2B rocket. Um, so until next time, see you later.